Hi gals, welcome back to another episode of Zero Waste Closet. So this week's video is gonna be a little bit different. I wanna have a chat with you guys. It's gonna be a chat, but you're also gonna see some looks. So I know you guys always like the visual part of things too. I wanna talk to you guys about some of the most common styling questions I get while I'm here at the store or even via text and email because people ask me questions morning, noon, and night, true. And I wanna share with you the answers that I most often come up with that seem to satisfy people. These are things that may resonate with you, all of them, some of them. So let's take a look. Okay. One question that I have been getting a lot lately, particularly since this is something that has been so in style for months now is how do I wear wide leg pants, particularly when I am a petite gal. And so the thing that most often I hear is that, you know, you're, you feel short. And when you put on a wide leg pant, you're kind of drowning in pants. So how do you take something that is so fun and on trend and actually make it work for you? Well, I have a couple of solutions that very often seem to work here. And it often will depend on the pant itself and we'll get to that in a second. So number one may seem pretty obvious, but you'd be amazed how often people just don't think to put on the right pairs, pair of shoes with their pants. So take a wide leg jean and by simply adding in some sort of wedge sandal or maybe a comfortable but heeled booty, you lengthen yourself out and it just gives you that little extra to work with and it makes you go from feeling kind of dumpy to feeling kind of longer and leaner in that wide leg pant. So that's one way to cope with it. Something else to think about is what you pair those pants with. So what you want to avoid when you're wearing a wide leg pant is a lot of fabric on top because that wider leg can feel like a lot of fabric and then if you add in something really heavy on top or really boxy, it can create that feeling or that look of your drowning in fabric. And so you don't want that. What I would suggest is something that hits right around the waistline or maybe something a little more form fitting. And if you're a little heavier around the middle or the top, you can also just take something and do a little half tuck in the front, just so you break it up a little bit and draw a little bit of attention to that waistline to create something that is a little more like an hourglass shape. So that is another solution to the wide leg pant dilemma. Something else to think about, of course, are the pants themselves. So go for something in a lighter weight, flowier fabric. Avoid a really heavy, heavy fabric, a super heavy denim, for instance. That is just gonna make you feel like the gravity's taking you even, even further downwards. Whereas a flowy pant has nice ease and movement to it and can keep the lengthening look going. Um, something else to think about is the shape of that pant. Wide leg pants come in a variety of silhouettes. So maybe avoid the just classic really wide leg pant and go for something with a little more of like a fit and a slight flare at the bottom to capture the wide leg trend or just something that's wider legged but not super wide leg has maybe even a little more of a straight leg look to it. Okay, another question I commonly get is also about something that is sort of a trend piece, although I think this type of thing never really goes out of style, and it is the baby doll dress. That is something that is loose and swingy. It's often kind of empire-waisted. As women, we tend to love these dresses because they're so airy, they're so comfortable, they're so easy. However, I often hear from women, they'll come out of the fitting room and they'll go, oh my gosh, it feels so good, but I feel so kind of heavy and kind of dumpy in this. It doesn't show my shape. I don't think it's that flattering. So there is a way to make a dress like this look actually super cute and super fun. And frankly, ladies, I just think it's all about the shoes. It's 
all about adding in a shoe that creates some edginess to the dress, maybe focuses on your fabulous legs, while the top is very kind of floaty and maybe hiding your figure underneath, you can really highlight those fabulous legs of yours by putting on a really cute little sandal if you want to and this is your style oh there's nothing better in my opinion than a baby doll style dress and a super cute pair of cowboy boots maybe you even throw on a hat to finish the look some great jewelry so that it's not just all about just the dress it's about the whole entire look you have to finish the look when you're putting on these dresses another little piece of advice I have when it comes to the baby doll dresses if you're not loving where it hits like at the knee let's say or just right below the knee don't hesitate to just go and get it hemmed. I will say the most flattering length on these dresses seems to be just right above the knee. So you're covering a lot of the leg but not the whole leg and that may make you feel even just a little bit sexier in it. A third question I often get has to do with shirts that are like the classic button down style shirt, the collared shirt, uh, the Riley being my favorite one that I talk about all the time. This fabulous Tencel shirt from Velvet Heart that we get in so many different colors. A lot of you guys love these shirts for their awesome styling potential. You totally love the Tencel fabric. It's just comfy and easy. However, what do you do if you're a busty gal? You're broader perhaps through the top, maybe you're fuller through the bust. I often hear, gosh, I love this shirt, but I just can't get it buttoned and it's just pulling across the top. I don't know how to make it work for me. Well, I have done lots of videos on the Riley shirt, so you guys can go back through my YouTube channel and see all kinds of styling ideas to see that there are many ways to style the shirt, not just simply buttoned down. So my first solution to this, it's kind of amazing amazing how often people are like, oh yeah, I didn't think to do that. And then they do it and they're like, oh my gosh. And that is just simply wear the shirt unbuttoned and wear a cute little tank or shell or t-shirt underneath. Wear it like a shirt jacket or a shacket. And that gives it just a fun, casual, easy style. And it allows you to wear it comfortably without the fear that you it's pulling across the chest or gaping between the buttons. So that's one answer. Another solution is honestly just to find one that's in a really nice flowy fabric like Tencel and then go up a size. So I know some of you are concerned about going up a size and you're worried that then it's gonna look too big, but I have to reassure you, and I keep saying this because it's just so true, oversized shirts with a drop shoulder and a dolman sleeve are really the most popular sil silhouette that we're seeing. So if you have to go up a size to accommodate your bustiness, you are staying totally on trend going with that larger, more oversized flowy shirt. So there is definitely a way to make it work for you. So something else I will often hear as women are browsing the store is, oh my gosh, I love all of these really cute sleeveless styles or even some of the strapless styles like the strapless jumpsuits, but I hate my arms. I don't want to show my arms. Girls, if I had a dollar for every woman who has told me she doesn't want to show her arms and she doesn't know what to do, oh my gosh, I would be so rich. So there are so many easy ways to accommodate this. Now we're going into the warmer months and so the idea of throwing on a denim jacket or maybe like a nice flowy cardigan, those are great for fall winter, but what are you going to do with the sleeveless strapless styles when you're going into summer? Well. It's a pretty simple answer, but it seems to work every single time. And that is Dawn, one of our fabulous flowy kimonos. I love kimonos. They are in style and in season every single summer. And they just add an, a fun element of style. Often they add some much needed color to the outfit. And they're usually, by the time you put them on, right down to around the elbow area, covering that part of your arm that you're the least comfortable with. So a flowy kimono, seems to do it every time. Another possibility here, if you're not a kimono kind of gal or you just need more options, is look for a cardigan, but in a very light knit, open weave like crochet and that is really perfect nice and airy for summertime. We have a handful of those here at Chill Boutique if you guys need to add to your collection. 
Okay, this next one isn't so much a styling question, but it is definitely a question that comes up all the time. And that is, oh my gosh, I love these sumptuous fabrics like Tencel, like I'm always talking about, or just a really soft, lovely, lightweight linen. But I hate going to the dry cleaners. I don't know if I can deal with this fabric. How do I care for it? And my answer is, gals, it is so easy. With almost all of our tencels and the linens that we have here in store, I just want you to know, like I almost never go to the dry cleaners. My life is too busy for that. With almost all of the ones that we have here in store, they are easily washable and many of them are dryable. So what I do for both my tencels and my linens is I put them in a regular cycle washing machine. A lot of times I'll turn them inside out just so nothing, um, there's no, uh, thing in the wash with them that gets caught on them, right? So it's not abrasive to them. And then they go through with the light colors. And when I take them out, I personally am a little scared of a full application of heat to them. So I will let them air dry. But here's the issue. When you let them fully air dry, at the end of that drying cycle, you're gonna go to them and go, why is it so hard and crunchy? What happened to that super soft fabric I loved? It's really easy, gals, when it's totally dry, go throw it in a regular heat dryer for like three or four minutes, that's it. No shrinkage will occur, but it will restore it to its original lovely softness and you'll have back that garment that you absolutely loved. It's so easy to take care of yourself. One other little piece of advice I would have for you is to make sure that you have your own mini steamer on hand. If you don't have one, we do have them here in store. They are online as well on our website. And a steamer, it takes two seconds, plug it in, in, heats up in like 30 seconds, a quick whoop, whoop, whoop with the steamer and the wrinkles fall right out and you've got that perfect piece back in your hands. And gals, last but not least, a question I get all the time is, what is a really good style uniform for me? Uh, just a good styling formula if I am super uncomfortable with my midsection. So many women, especially as we hit middle age, we just start kind of changing around the midsection. The struggle is real. It happens. And, you know, that can be hard to cope with when it comes to styling. So I have a few kind of typical outfit formulas that I will encourage women to explore. One of those is to perhaps take a pant that's a little more mid to even lower rise and take a flowy top like let's say the Riley shirt something that's buttoned down and just do a little half tuck in the front and you're past your midsection you're half tucking there letting the rest flow out and this way there is no emphasis at all on your midsection Another possibility is if you're just a little uncomfortable with your midsection, I also actually like to go the opposite direction and I like to go with a really high rise jean, maybe something that's shapewear like our Lisse, because it really is designed to just hold everything in and make you feel nice and secure. It's shapewear ladies. And then to take a flowy top, like something I've got on right now, just something nice, flowy and easy. And you're really showing off those legs with a flowy top on top again no attention to the waistline. Another solution is just to pick something that is just all around flowy, top to bottom, like a flowy dress or a flowy jumpsuit. Something that doesn't cinch in at the waist, but something that just lets you breathe. And you know, an empire waist can be really nice for this. We can even do this with tops where again, we've got on maybe a slimmer cut jean, and then we do a baby doll style top that's got some shape to it, but it's not cutting in right at that part of us where we just feel a little rounder or curvier. And I suppose the biggest message I have here when you're not super comfortable with your midsection is to focus on that part or those parts of you that you are comfortable with that are what you would consider your best features. So here's an example. 
show off your fabulous shoulders, right? Shoulders are very sexy. Draw the eye to that part of you that you do want people to notice. So again, what I'm wearing is a great example. An off the shoulder flowy top. There is zero attention to my waistline here and you're just kind of seeing this part and that's what the styling's all about. Another thing I hear from women a lot of times when they struggle with their midsection is that they absolutely love their legs. They love the shape of their legs. So, hey, make yourself a dress girl. Make yourself a flowy dress girl or embrace the skinny jean. To heck with what people are saying about only wide leg is in style. I don't think skinny jeans ever go out of style. I think skinny jeans are universally and eternally flattering on women. And so embrace the skinny jean, show off those fantastic legs and let the top be looser and flowier. Gals, this is one of those videos where I would really love to hear from you. If you have any solutions that I did not speak of here to the things we talked about that you want to share with your community, please drop those in the comment section below. Or if you have a styling challenge that is just, it's got you stumped, please again, share that with your community because you might find other people that are struggling with the same thing and I'll do the best that I can to address it if I have experience in that area or I've found great solutions. So thank you guys so much. If you guys liked this week's video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. That really, really helps. And if you haven't already, make sure you jump on here and subscribe to Zero Waste Closet. That way you guys get a notification whenever I come out with new videos. If you guys have any thoughts, ideas that you wanna share with me personally or privately, feel free to email me at lisa at shopchillstyle.com. And of course, if you need styling help, then make sure you come in store, see us here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, if you happen to be lucky enough to be out here at Chill Boutique or jump online to www.shopchillstyle.com. Now, one last little thing I wanna tell you guys, you may have already seen the previous video, but you were wonderful. You nominated me for Entrepreneur of the Year and Business Person of the Year with the Fountain Hills Chamber of Commerce. I thank you guys so much. And now it's time to go on and vote. And voting goes on, I think, for like another month. And I just, the sooner you vote, the better. I'm gonna drop a link to the voting page below. It only takes a quick second. It would mean the world to me to have your vote in both categories. Thank you guys so much. As always, thank you for your ongoing support. I love you guys so much. Just literally would not be here without you. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next one.